Hello, Mike Hagan. Welcome to another edition of Mike Hagan and the Strength Team Podcast. We always started off with our formal introduction. A lot of people who follow the podcast know that, uh, who we are, what the podcast is all about. But just wanted to give you a quick update. Uh, today is September 24th of 2012, and uh, we're on the road. We have events every week going on. Uh, two weeks ago, we were in uh, Ocala, Florida. We had a great event two weeks ago at Trinity Baptist Church. Phenomenal event, great crusade. 89 decisions, first-time decisions for people who ask Christ to come into their heart. And uh, it was a great event the whole week. We were there for four nights, and we just appreciate the people uh, from Trinity Baptist Church in Ocala, Florida. Thank you so much for having the strength team. Also, I want to say a special thank you to Keithville. Last weekend, we were in Keithville and had a great outreach. Uh, it was uh, Keithville is probably about 30 miles south of Shreveport. And so it was uh, Andy Gavin, who led the team, and also Chet Strain, who's the bull rider of our team. And they had a great event there. This week, we're going to be in Live Oak, Florida at First Baptist Church. And then the week after that, we're going to be in Tallahassee. The tour continues, Tallahassee, Florida at Friendship Baptist Church, and then going on to Americus, Georgia. Warren Alfred, one of the strength team members, uh, he's the senior pastor of that church. And then two weeks, the last two weeks of October, uh, we'll be in Pensacola for actually a two-week event with three different churches. And so we're excited about all the things that are updates about what's going on in the in ministry of the strength team, lives being touched and changed. But one of the things that I wanted to share as an update is that you might have seen on the Facebook a couple uh, weeks ago, or maybe on the on the Strength Team website. In fact, we do have a brand new Strength Team website at strengthteam.com. It's totally interactive. It connects with Facebook on the front page, and also on the other side is YouTube. So you can go and you can uh, you can kind of connect right to the outside of it. It's very very user friendly. Check out strengthteam.com, and uh, you can you can see our Facebook account, and then also we have uh, on that you know for our donation we have a new button that. People can donate now. A lot of people want to help and partner with the strength team. People ask us about that in our partnership program. They can go right on the Facebook and the fate on the front where it says donate now. But one of the things uh, through through the social media, through Facebook and through Twitter, is I, um, I had a procedure that happened a couple weeks ago. And a lot of people thought that I had open heart surgery, but it was actually uh, a, a, my defibrillator was replaced and. A lot of the people who know uh, the strength team know that in 2004, I had a, a massive heart attack. And it's, it's, it's a miracle that I, I'm really alive. It's, uh, I don't have time to tell you the whole story, but in Gainesville, Florida, of May 7th of 2004, on a Thursday night at Westside Baptist Church, my good friend, Pastor Gary Crawford, the senior pastor there, was preaching, and I hadn't been feeling good. Uh, the strength team had just started at that time, and, and what had happened was I had a heart attack and actually a day and a half had gone by and my LAD artery was totally shut down. And because of this heart attack, it caused an, it caused an arrhythmia problem, which a month later, I ended up having a defibrillator in 2004. Uh, it was like a pacemaker, it's real small, you really can't see, it's on the inside of me. And uh, a lot of people, when I said I had surgery on my heart, they thought I had open heart surgery, but it wasn't as invasive, but it was a small procedure. But um, it's something that, uh, it's got you know, the recovery's gone well, and getting ready mid October that I'll be back on the road doing minor stuff with strength team. But really, as a strength team leader, kind of taking more of a role. We have 15 different guys that are on the team. Guys like William Green and Andy Gavin, Clarence Lee, Andre Sims, all that you know, Chet Stray, all the different guys that go out and do strength team events. And so, kind of at the stage after doing this for 26 years, that I'm more uh, being the coach rather than the player. And so it's like, you know, uh, 53 years old and I feel like I'm still running the ball. And so I'm excited about uh, doing some work here in town with our church, doing some work, but also just helping out our office and coordination and really being the leader of the strength team. And so just kind of an update. A lot of people have, uh, you know, I thought I'd say this on the update on the podcast. A lot of people have asked, Mike, how you doing? Did you have open heart surgery? No, but the defibrillator, everything's running fine. And, and really, uh, in the eight years that I had it before, when it, when it, boom, when it went off, it saved my life five different times. And, uh, 
you know, what, you go into an arrhythmia, and, and if there's not something there to, to shock it, to put it back into place, you, you can go be with Jesus. And so that's what would happen to me, because when I was 21 years old, I made the greatest decision of my life, and I gave my heart to Christ. And so, you know, in this life, we know that life is short, death is sure, sin is the cause, but only Christ is a cure. And so, in, in, of a decision that I made for uh, when I was 21 years old to receive Christ in my heart, to receive the free gift of God, not to, you know, join it something or um, American religion, but to be a believer in God through His Son Jesus Christ was something that was life changing for me. It totally changed the destiny and my future. At that time, I was a junior in college playing college football for the University of Montana Grizzlies. And at that, that time in my life that I never really knew the Lord. I grew up in church. I knew church. I knew that, you know, that there was a God. But in my heart, I never understood that it was real. I, I knew that, you know, God, you, know, you know, the Bible says that God loved me, but I really didn't think he liked me that much. i just be honest with you. And so uh, at, at a time in my life when I really made a commitment, I opened my heart to the Lord, things in my life, I just didn't become someone who was religious that was judgmental towards other people and, and pointing my finger at people. But I, it was something on the inside of me that, that the Bible says, when you ask Christ to come into your heart, that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead comes and lives inside of you. And so, you know, the Bible talks about in Psalms 91 about having a secret place with the Lord. And one thing that's exciting, the most exciting thing about being a Christian, it's not being on the strength team, not the years that I was on the power team before that, the exciting thing about being a Christian is knowing God in a relationship that He is my Father. I lost my dad when I was seven, but at the age of uh, 21 years old, I received my Heavenly Father. And I tell you what, God is the Father to the fatherless. It says it in Romans 8, 15, it says we receive a spirit of adoption where we can cry out, Abba, Father. And I know something. I have a, a confidence and a security in my life that if something was to happen with my heart, or if I was to go be with the Lord, if I was to die, then the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so, you know, like it says in Psalms 91, I don't fear the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the midday. You know, a thousand may fall at my right hand, 10,000 at my right side, but it will not come near me because I have a secret place with the Lord. And so in my life, the most important thing in my life is my relationship with the Lord it's also been good that I've been home and I've been off the road that I get to spend time with my wife. And uh, Ann and I have been married for 31 years. And uh, I tell you what, she is just, uh, we're best friends. And so uh, she's going back to college. And so that's a, that's a cool thing that she's going back to the University of Montana to get her degree. Two years, she'll be a surgical technician. And so the strength team is, is doing well. It's, it's doing great. We're all over the country in different places. A lot of different events that we're doing, planning for 2013. But I just want to say this, is that, that Jesus is alive and well and in my heart. And so physically, uh, I'm doing well. I mean, I talked to my cardiologist last week, and he's like, Mike, you're doing good. In fact, he goes, you, you're, you're, it's amazing that you can still do the strength team and all the stuff that you do. It's just amazing that you get everything that you've been through with your heart. But you know what? That's just a miracle. And I really believe that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Just like he healed people all those years back, he, he's uh, really touched my heart and made it possible for me to continue on with this ministry called the Strength Team, but more in a leadership position, which I kind of like that role. And so God bless you. Listen, we have a great month coming up here in October. Uh, don't miss. Uh, we have all kinds of different action uh, with the different guys, different things that we have coming up. Also, uh, last thing I want to talk about is we are going to be in Haiti again. Last year, we were there in February. You probably saw the podcast and all the different uh, events that we did in Haiti. Uh, it was a life-changing experience for me when I went to Haiti last year. And so we're going to go back to Haiti with David Burton. And uh, that's going to be the uh, 6th of January through the 13th. We'll be there for one week, three different places. We'll be in Port-au-Prince and we'll be in three different outreach locations. And it's going to be like the Book of Acts. No school assemblies, we just go in the streets and then we do night program in the streets. And so it's going to be an awesome, awesome event. That event you're going to hear more about here coming up in October. We're going to be talking more about our Haiti trip. And now 
people even can be a part of that if they'd like to be a part of our Haiti trip that's here coming up pretty soon. So God bless your friends, and, and, and remember this, just put Christ in the center of your life. Things in life might be hectic, and things might not be going the way you want it to be, but if you put your, your hope and your faith in Jesus Christ, you can stand in God's Word in Romans 8, 28, says God causes all things to work together for good if we love them and if we're called according to his purpose. So we'll see you in another edition of Mike Hagan and the String Team Podcast.